Good afternoon. Welcome on into another episode of From Day One. Courtesy of our good friend Law Talk Mike, we have some fun on the court. Starting with a Karen trying to argue her own appeal. Is attorney Stacy Adamski. Okay. Um, Ms. Segalis, um, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, okay. great. Oh, there you are. Um, so you can go ahead. You understand you have five minutes and you can um, save any time you'd like to respond after um, the appellee response. So go ahead. Hi, so good morning um, and thank you. So with my five minutes, I'd like to take the first half to speak to you and then you're welcome to ask me questions after because last time we did this, um, you guys asked me questions. I didn't really get to speak. So I just want to say I will leave time for questions. So I'm sure you're familiar with the story, but I'm going to give you a first-hand synopsis just as a refresher. Defendants used every single resource they could find, including four local police departments, Shouldn't the unit for special investigations, Homeland Security, FBI, the state attorneys, doctors, teachers, dentists, lawyers, literally grooming professional witnesses with inappropriate financial relationships to try to send me to jail for imaginary and horrific crimes that I didn't commit. Hi, Natalie Lord. Chuck, nice to see you. <laughs> so they could forcibly take my child from me. That was the goal, and that's what happened. And it worked. My son is about to turn 18, and he still believes that I am a violent criminal who assaulted him and that I went to jail for it. He believes that he is a sexual assault victim, and I have read in reports that he is well-adjusted and doing well, but what kind of well-adjustment is believing that you are a parental sexual assault victim when you are decidedly not that? My son has been groomed to take every opportunity to be abusive to me, and as such, I suspended visitation to protect both of us from continued irreparable emotional harm directed at me, proxy through him. For the record, I have not had a meaningful conversation with my son where he was not under this influence. Since 2012, when he was six years old. So 11 years later, there has not been a single consequence assigned. There's not a single one. So that's a quick summary. Again, I will ask, I want to see questions um, at the end. So um, the word genocide means forcibly transferring children from one group to another. And this case actually now falls within the parameters. Uh, I don't think that word means what you think it means. No, I don't either. Okay. Hold on a second. Alexa, please define genocide. Genocide is usually defined as the deliberate and systematic extermination of a national, racial, political, or cultural group. Yeah, so dear, no, you're wrong. Thank okay. you, Alexa. Well, we'll carry on. Th th that's where she sounds straight like Sarah Pike Levy right there. Because of that definition, Lake was forcibly removed from me under false pretenses of complete horror, and the actual truth has been under court order to remain that way ever since. As a result, he will le likely never meet his maternal family, including uncle, aunt, me, his cousin, his extended family, and his overseas relatives, because he, conditions, he has been conditioned to believe that we are all people. I really hope to have my day in court to not only remand the hundreds of thousands of dollars lost for me and my family, because I was tried in a family court instead of a criminal court, so no public defender was offered to me, um, but also so that someday my son would be able to learn the actual yeah, it was before the family court because they had proper jurisdiction to decide that issue. It's not a conspiracy against you. Truth about what happened to him since the truth is under seal with punishment is hope. The punishment that's only ever been slapped on me, frequently inappropriately and under false pretenses, the punishments have never been assigned to the news. I am asking for my day in court, and in order for that to happen, I need additional time to secure legal representation. Please. She didn't live. Judge did not give me enough time to find an attorney. There was a pandemic that shut courts down for 18 months. And it seems like maybe 18 months would have been reasonable enough time to find a new attorney, but that, that was not offered. Um, I wasn't allowed the same amount of time because the, the courts were shut down. So in just over a year, despite pleading with the court, 
on multiple occasions and showing over 50 calls made to demonstrate a good faith effort. Okay, so here's the problem. I don't know the underlying um, situation here. It's, there's some family yeah. squabble. They, they've gone back and forth, but it was in the courts for years, as you will see. She's saying 18 months isn't enough time to find an attorney. Uh, only if your, your claims don't have merit, to be honest, or you have no money. So those are only two ways I, I can see that. There is no way the, – the, what, ha, what appears to have happened, I, uh, again, because all we have is this 10-minute appeal. What appears Thank to you. have happened is she filed a, a lawsuit. It got up to trial. She tried to continue it the day of trial. Nobody can do this. Nobody can get away with this. The judge said, no, nope. she walks out on trial. And my guess is the judge entered, uh, d just dismissed the case because she didn't prosecute it, which there's really nothing else you can do. Now she's before the appellate court asking for more time to get an attorney. If you didn't get an attorney uh, in the 18 months during the pandemic, by the way, an easy time to get an attorney because nothing else was going on, um, you're not going to get it later. That I litigate my own case, which caused me an abrupt and unexpected trip to the ER for a cardiac workup. Imagine cross-examining your own child who believes that you sexually assaulted him and the abusers who, did the, who orchestrated this whole thing. It was insinuated that I lied about this, so I sent a copy of my EKG from the hospital. It wasn't enough. I begged for more time for more representation. So strictly against medical advice, I showed up to close the case. There was no other choice. I was not given enough time to find an attorney. But a pandemic shut the courts down for 18 well, months. It seems reasonable. <laughs> if you offered enough time. Please, I am only asking for my day in court. And in order for that to happen, I need additional time to secure representation. As the, oh, sorry, I will close with my good friend Kevin Bose taught me to always end a pleading with and any additional relief that the court might find appropriate. Thank you, and I will take your questions. I don't see that there are any questions. Um, would you like to save your one minute for rebuttal? No. <laughs> okay, well, I'll give you that opportunity. <laughs> like this, just... <laughs> yeah, so she kicks it off by saying, I, I'm going to give my statement, and then you guys can ask me questions. That was earlier. I, I let it go. But yeah, that's not how it works. You're, you're before a panel of, uh, on an appellate court. They can ask you questions anytime they damn please. They did stay out of the way. Then they didn't even have questions for her. She has a minute left. Would you like to save that for, for rebuttal? No. No, I'm an idiot. Why not? I mean, you don't have to use it. <laughs> and then, and then the, the uh, justice or whatever says, well, we'll reserve it for you anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. That might just be an attorney thing, but it was too fun for me. In any event, after we hear from Ms. Adamski. So, Ms. Adamski, um, go ahead and um, introduce yourself and your client and proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. My name is Stacey Adamski, and I represent Marilyn Knudsen. I am here on behalf of both Marilyn and uh, Ray Knudsen. I will be making the argument uh, for myself and for Attorney Robin Thalen. After hearing um, appellant's arguments regarding the history of the case, the one issue that is very clear is that none of the allegations that she has made have ever been proven in court. We were on the verge of a five-day jury trial. We had, had a, we had paneled a 12-person jury with three alternates on that day. They were at the courthouse waiting to proceed. She explains later. The appellant then filed a or filed a motion to continue on the Friday before the five-day jury trial was supposed to continue at you know, two or three o'clock in the afternoon was when I received it. She then gave a uh, document purporting to be her EKG without any sort of medical evidence about what that uh, EKG represented or how it impacted her or why it would give the court cause to continue this jury trial. Prior to the jury trial, both Attorney McClellan and I had uh, subpoenaed witnesses. We had prepared our witnesses. We had uh, filed motions in limine. We had filed jury instructions. Any delay at that point would have had a significant impact both on the defendants and on the court for time. The appellant, while giving a, uh, a story that she believes to be moving and believes to be uh, draw the court's empathy, does ignores the fact that what she's asking for is for this court to overturn decisions made by the... Give me just one second, ladies and gentlemen. We'll be right back with the appellate.
Sorry about that, folks. You just had to cue the tape. Let's get back to the, the trial court. court, which were well within her, the, the trial judge's discretion. There is no argument or no support for why any of this should take place. There is nothing in any case law that suggests that the appellant is entitled to an attorney or that she would have more time to secure counsel. There is nothing that suggests that if the court were to have given her an additional delay after the year that she had no. had, that she would have been successful in getting a new counsel. And there's nothing to suggest that any sort of delay would have done anything other than kicking this can that had been on the court's calendar for seven years to, to any further that's on, the civil, that's on the civil court's calendar for seven years, but it had been on the family court calendar for much longer than that. For 15. I'm asking, is her dad sort of... Uh, that's right, people. We've had two actions going, one for seven, one for 15. And she's crying about not having a chance to have an attorney. By the way, she had an attorney who withdrew, and she agreed with it. Probably because the attorney said, you know, I, I, this is a bridge too far. You're, you're trying to make, get me to make arguments that don't make sense. That is my guess. Very good guess. Um, doesn't guess. that sort of support Ms. Zagalis' request? Because uh, this is a highly complex case with... with um, oh, here we go. I don't know if this guy's playing devil's advocate or he really believes it, but he's saying, you know, this is a highly complicated case that she can't handle. We all agree with that. The other thing she can't do is is just walk away from a trial with jurors and paneled the day of trial on some trumped up BS. Otherwise, you don't have a system whatsoever. The defendant has rights here as well. Significant amounts of uh, accusations on both sides and um, difficulties with a lot of um, difficult emotions and, uh, and facts that were highly in dispute, if I, if I read it correctly. Um, and that for her to do this on her own um, isn't at the, at the end. Absolutely. Here's the other thing, too, where I can just tell this is, yeah, uh, this is an irrational crusade. The kid's 18. If if you want to uh, if you want to um, rekindle your relationship with your child at this age, it's just up to them. That's all there is to it. There's nothing else. Even if a judge comes in and says, "Okay, you you you, you must talk to your mother or something," which they wouldn't, uh, it, it doesn't matter. It's not enforceable. It's that that's that. So we're past any of this mattering. End of. Uh somebody's ability to handle a complex case like this? Well, I, I certainly don't disagree that it is a very complex case, but I think there, there are two questions at play here. One is whether or not she's entitled to have counsel. We do not know why her former counsel uh, withdrew or, and withdrew with uh, attorney, or, uh, Ms. Gallus's permission. We also don't know that she would ever be successful in getting new counsel. It could be that the people that she contacted read and reviewed the case and said, we don't think that, you know, we want to take on this case or we don't think that your arguments have merit. I mean, th this case, pending in both the family court and the, um, in the civil court, a lot of things have changed since the, the case first came to this court's opinion. And, and one are our issues and arguments that are made in the family court, including um, the, uh, sound recordings that... By the way, warning, we don't get a ruling. This is an appellate uh, court. This is argument. The appellate courts just don't issue rulings right afterwards. They issue rulings, uh, or they, or they issue written rulings by and large later, after after their clerks draft them. That, that's how it works. Judge Corzones put on the record and read into the transcript. I mean, this is not a case. That's, that's just Nancy Corzones. Just for so the record, record's clear, it's just Nancy Corzones. My overwhelming guess is, despite this guy playing devil's advocate here, that her that her appeal gets uh, denied, and 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 the the ruling of the uh, of the first court gets affirmed. I believe it was Corzones. There's two, there's two Judge Corzones. I just want to be clarified that it's Judge Nancy Corzones. My understanding, and I was not in the family court hearing because I did not represent. Uh, my client was not a party to it, but my my you have one, you have one minute remaining. Thank you, Your Honor. The, this was a family court decision that was made within the past uh, 18 months to two years, Your Honor. Oh, this is a, a recent what? That, that, had a, no that had a sound recording in it. Back. That makes this case not as black and white as, as Ms. Segalas wants it to be, that that this, this uh, you know, that the nuisance have made a, a uh, somehow break.
brainwashed their child. It is not that case. But her time to make these arguments and to have these conclusions before the court to secure her um, her, her day in court, as she's requested, was given to her. And it was given to her with five days. And then she refused to move forward. It was, she was told and given the opportunity to proceed and told she told the court that she wanted to go home. The court gave her very clear instructions on what would happen if she did not proceed. And the case was dismissed appropriately. Thank you. Thank you so much. And bailiff, uh, Ms. Sigalis has one minute remaining. Is that correct? Ellen has 47 seconds remaining. Okay. Um, go ahead, Ms. Sigalis, if you'd like to. Um, I'm okay. I was not able. I don't. I couldn't listen to her. I muted her. So I don't have no idea what she said. It doesn't matter. Well, just to be clear, you you could have listened, but you chose to mute. I am so emotionally ripped apart right now that I can't even hear what she has to say because what comes out okay. of her mouth is a representation of lies and manipulation. Okay. Thank you. Physically. Thank you. All right. The bailiff may uh, call a close to the case. We had a uh, got into an altercation. Uh, There's no such thing as that. You got into an altercation. Okay. That was 23 CR 227. State appears by Assistant County Attorney Jared Regeer. Mr. Hunt appears in person by Zoom. Uh, Mr. This is kind of fun, but it's it's a departure for Law Talk with Mike. Yeah. All the defendants are pretty rational and make good sense here. Mike, really? So we're, it's something you're not going to be used to. Uh, we're here for a first appearance. Looks like you were arrested and posted bond. Did you receive a copy of your charges? I know you are. All right, I'm going to go over those with you. Um, there are three counts. And do you have a pen and paper? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Each one of these three counts is alleged to have occurred on April 30th, 2023 in Butler County, Kansas. I got to get back to Gushati Court. Count one <laughs> alleges that you were in unlawful possession of marijuana. Marijuana. That is a Class B non-person misdemeanor. Count two alleges that you were in unlawful possession of paraphernalia for use. Uh, for being in possession of a clear bag, I'm assuming the bag was used to store the marijuana. Those are both Class B non-person misdemeanors. They carry a maximum penalty of six months in jail and up to a $1,000 fine. Count three, it's, you're charged with speeding 75 in a 65 mile an hour zone. That's a traffic infraction and that carries a statutory fine. Do you understand what you've been charged with, Mr. Hunt? Yes, Your Honor. And how do you intend to proceed on your case? Uh, I'd like to request uh, um, uh, public assistance. Okay, you wish to apply for court-appointed counsel? Uh, yes, Your Honor. All right, so you, you... Okay, so he didn't know the right thing to say, I, I want to apply for court-appointed counsel, or you said public assistance, but this, this is typical. Like, he, just because you don't... Uh, you're not an attorney doesn't mean you can't say things in plain English and we won't figure it out. It's a rational request. It's the right thing to do. We'll translate in, in a courtroom. We'll translate from rational request in English to law. That's not a problem. This, that's what I'm saying. This guy actually makes sense. You can't afford to hire your own attorney? No, no Your Honor. All right. Are you currently employed? No, no, sir. And how long has it been since you worked? It's been seven years since I was a disabled veteran. Okay, so you receive veterans' disability? Yes, sir. Okay. I'll appoint Darren Patterson to represent you. He's an attorney in El Dorado. I can provide you his phone number. Finally gets a decent yes, client. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Area code 316. Good for you, Darren. This guy will listen to you. 322. You'll resolve that one quickly. Seven seven zero zero. You guys do not harass him. You deserve it, brother. <laughs> All right. Your next court date will be July thirty first, twenty twenty three, at eight o'clock a.m. in front of Judge Webster by Zoom. July thirty first at eight o'clock a.m.
That'll be a plea. Down yeah. what? All approved. The bond we'll that, that you posted. Three all away. Not much will happen, and he'll be Where fine. do you reside, Mr. Hunt? In Longton, Kansas, sir. Longton? Yes, sir. All right, you need to call Mr. Patterson's office when we get done here today. That would be cool. And give them your court date and contact information. And make sure that you stay in communication with him um, between now and your next court date. Yes, sir. And then again, you'll be appearing by Zoom. Your internet connection seems um, pretty... I, I called Regeer, but he didn't call me back. And, and I... And I'm not sure. I'm not sure, but I think Jill Gillette answered the phone because <laughs> I called the office. <laughs> <laughs> she asked if she could do anything for me, and I was and I was too. Uh, I didn't want to freak her out and ask her if she was Jill Gillette. <laughs> That's the truth. That's the behind behind the scenes truth, people. Solid here today. So, do you have any questions? Yes, sir. Um, can I have my case number once again, please? Twenty three CR two twenty seven. Yeah. All right, thank you, sir. And uh, Mr. Hunt, as a condition of bond, you're not to possess or consume alcohol or illegal drugs? Yes, sir. All right, Mr. Regeer, anything else on Mr. Hunt's case? Your Honor, I have a note in the file which would appear to suggest this defendant may or may not have applied for diversion recently. Um, given that the court has appointed Mr. Patterson, in this case, I respectfully suggest any further communications to my office should go through the defendant's attorney. All right. All right. You're nodding and that you understand, Mr. Hunt, since you are represented by counsel, um, just allow Mr. Patterson. By, by the way, that's that's helping the defendant out here. Yeah. He's, he's say, what he's saying is he's calling over here. I'm afraid you might say something stupid. Just let Darren close this. That, that That's that's Regeer. It doesn't look like it, but he's trying to be helpful. Center his office to further communicate with the county attorney's office if you have, in fact, Submitted a diversion application. I just your honor. All right. If there's nothing further, we'll be in recess. Mr. Hunt, you are excused. Thank you. Thank you, sir. All right. So we had an idiot and then a save one. With that, we will bring this to a close. Thank you, Mike, for your fun. Come on back tonight. We'll have some fun. I'll see if I can find us a subset or Karen. Till then, thanks for watching from day one. Have a great afternoon.